All right, let's talk about the Baltimore Ravens offense. You know, Tyler Huntley, I thought he played well in this one. Not perfect, though. And kind of talk about the fatal flaws they had in this game, why they were unable to eventually pull this, pull off this victory, while at the same time still doing some very nice things. We'll talk about how the upset almost happened and why it ultimately didn't. Let's just get into it. Let's start off with this play. So this one is the interception. This obviously, you know, at the time, made it feel like, okay, here we go. This is, you know, we expected the Bengals to kind of win this one-handedly. They would score a touchdown on the next drive, and everyone decided it was over, which seems to be a trend uh, this wild card weekend, or excuse me, super wild card weekend. Weird how that happened in the Buffalo game, in the uh, Seattle-San Francisco game, and in this one, the heavy favorite went up. Uh, by two scores quickly or more only for the other team to come scoring back and take the lead. But anyways, this is, uh, you know, it, it's a mistake by Huntley. It just is. It's a zone coverage play. You have Mark Andrews trying to get into a gap in coverage. And one of the things we talked about going in was it felt like if this team was going to win, it's going to have to be at least in decent part, but probably in large part, on the strength of Andrews. Andrews is so good. He's one of the best tight ends in football. Getting him involved is always a good idea. Looking his direction is always a good idea, especially on plays like this that he has become known for being one of the best in football at of just finding the soft spots in zone. Look at how when Huntley takes the snap, he is going to fire in that direction, but it just wasn't available. And that's kind of one of the issues with you having an obvious strategy is that the other team then knows that that strategy is probably going to happen. They know they have to be more aware of when they play zone coverage over the middle if you see Mark Andrews lined up near you, cover him because there's a very good chance the ball is going in his direction. Huntley should have noticed this and not made this throw. Huntley makes the throw anyways, and again, there's just there's no getting around it. That was an error by Huntley, and it led to a short field, which led to seven points. So while it didn't actually cost you seven points, that's not exactly how that works. It still was a big error and one that he definitely should uh, shouldn't have made. But again, when you run a, the kind of the style the Ravens run, mistakes are going to happen. Where this play, it's a lot of what they do is just they run the ball, they try to methodically move down the field. You know, the 17 play, 10 minute drive is perfectly Baltimore. I think perfectly, kind of, perfectly kind of encapsulates what they do and what they try to do, which is get these long sustained drives. Listen. You'd love a one-play touchdown if you can get it, but if you can't get it, we'll get the long, sustained drive. You have to play mistake-free football, but there were definitely times in stretches in this game where they were doing exactly that. Like, on this play, what's going to happen is it's going to be a handoff here, and you see the blocking concept, and really, everyone on the right side is blocked. J.K. Dobbins is going to get the ball. You are leaving uh, for in this situation. You always got to leave someone unblocked, but given the fact that the Bengals have two safeties who are further deep, you can leave the two safeties these deep, meaning you can block everybody else. Watch as one, uh, you see Huntley give the ball to Dobbins. I uh, paused it right here, and you can see he just has a wide open running lane. Dobbins is able to pick up 12 yards on this play, and being able to run the ball effectively is still definitely a way you can win in today's NFL. And one of the things that happens sometimes when you get to the playoffs, I think about San Francisco last year, were the teams that oftentimes get to the playoffs are the teams that throw the ball well and the teams that defend the pass well well sometimes you get a good running team that gets in and then they become a mismatch and that happened a little bit in this one of the Ravens being able to run the ball effectively now the flip side is definitely the passing game uh had its faults I think there's no denying that you knew that going in I mean the passing game has its issues when Lamar is out there it's obviously going to have its issues when Huntley is out there like in this situation they would have loved to be able to get into the end zone get seven points instead of just three although you definitely want to get three make sure you take the lead you have a situation where it's actually Sammy Watkins's route against his zone coverage could maybe get open towards the sideline uh, Huntley is actually going to roll out in that direction to, to just to try to make the angle a little bit easier and notice how when this play begins, you can see that there is a small window. It's not, an, not a big window by any means, but maybe if Watkins can adjust to this one really well, make a diving catch, uh, if it's a good throw, maybe you can get this completion. As you see, it just doesn't happen. You just don't expect Baltimore really in this game to be able to convert on these types of plays consistently, and that's okay. That's You, you know your limitations going in. Yes, you would have loved to convert on that one, but they were not able to. But then this play would happen where it's a sluggo. I love a good sluggo. This was, you know, I was thinking during this play, like, you know, the Ravens, they're they're moving the ball a little, but aren't I going to be able to really punch the ball 
And, well, they were able to get an explosive. You know, we talk about the methodical drives. Being able to get an explosive is so key. And this was designed to get an explosive. This was a really smart play. I think they picked their spot for this one. I think they thought that maybe they could get Eli Apple to fall for this, where it's going to be, uh, again, sluggo. If you don't know, it's a slant and go. So it means you start off as though you're running a slant route, but then you run a go route. And one of the key factors is actually Huntley. Watch what Huntley does. Watch as Huntley takes the snap. He uh, has a pump fake right there, right? That pump fake really gets Eli Apple to move in. I mean, you see Apple has completely bit in on this play, which, again, you can criticize him for. People love a good making fun of Eli Apple session. I get it. But the reality is, I, I'm actually guessing that they probably saw something on tape. They probably saw somewhere Eli Apple loves to try to jump routes on these slants. I remember that's actually how he, you know, kind of helped win them a playoff game against Tennessee was by jumping a slant route, causing an interception that was late in the fourth quarter. Jamar Chase got made a play to get him in field goal range, and McPherson sent them to the next round. Well, here it's working in the opposite direction. Robinson then runs the go route. Huntley does not miss it. Beautiful throw from Huntley, a guy who's not known for being a thrower, but hey, that's a great throw right there, and you're able to tie the game just like that. So listen, it's the playoffs, right? That's one of the things that we talk about in the playoffs is people are just that much more prepared. Reminds me a bit of, I remember there was a fake punt in the Saints-Eagles playoff game from a couple years back. That was with Nick Foles, uh, the year that just, you know, after the Eagles had won the Super Bowl, where there was a fake punt. They knew Fletcher Cox tend, would often take those plays off is what they saw on tape, and they were able to execute that perfectly in the playoffs. Uh, no reason same, saving this play for later. If you see it, use it. Great stuff from Baltimore. We then saw them struggle a bit in the fourth quarter. Obviously, there was that huge fumble recovery, 98 yards, all that stuff, which I made a whole video on. But even after that, they struggled. It was again, it's the passing game. The drop back passing game just was not consistent. A play like this, I mean, Cincinnati is worried about a Huntley run. Like, that's what their coverage they're in. They're uh, blitzing here. It's a cover three zone blitz. They are solely trying to make sure that they just don't give up a scramble for 10 yards, which means the passing game should be okay, but I just don't think guys were getting open. Watch as you see when Huntley looks down the field. He just doesn't love what he sees and now is in scramble mode, but as we talked about, Cincinnati is in a situation where they have five guys sort of swarming and being prepared for a potential Huntley run. Nothing is open out of field, so we can't throw. There's just, there's nothing for him to do. He ends up getting sacked, which, you know, uh, you still wouldn't have loved, I think, because at least you could go for it on fourth and 10 if you wanted to. Uh, but, you know, sack makes it basically, you have to punt the ball away. But just, it's good defense by Cincinnati more than anything, I think. So yeah, I mean, again, they did some nice things that come back for a second, felt like it was going to happen, right? Felt like they were going to actually pull it off uh, and, you know, cut, fell just short on that fourth down and 20 Hill Mary that almost worked. But as a whole, I still think, uh, you know, impressive performance from Huntley as they were underdogs. They found a way to nearly pull off this victory. But unfortunately for the Ravens, I'm sure they're saying they're tired of nearly pulling off the big victories. They want to just pull off some of these big victories, but, you know, Pay Lamar Jackson, I think that's a better chance of happening. But yeah, I think you got to give Huntley credit for how he played. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.